Hey Tony, it's Friday. And first off, to answer your question of the week, there was a project I was working on. Uh, I was the Wasteland Diaries that I'd mentioned in previous videos. Unfortunately, work has been crazy busy for months now, and I haven't actually done a lot of work on it, which is a little unfortunate, but it's maybe when work slows down, if, if it ever does, I might be able to get back to it. But for the time being, no, I'm not really working on any projects. I'm getting ready for the Star Wars game and looking forward to that, but otherwise, not really working on a big thing. Uh, so what I want to talk about this week is actually a video I've been wanting to make for several weeks now. And that is, I want to talk about two different genres of music that I've been listening to a lot right now, and what it means and kind of what it represents for us as a culture, particularly Americans as a culture. Now, those two genres, it's kind of two and a half, are Heartland Rock slash Americana Rock and Pop Punk. Now, Pop Punk is... One, I don't don't think it really needs that much of a just that that much of an explanation because it's what you and I've been listening to for over a decade now, Tony. Your Blink 182s, your Simple Plans, even in part your Green Days, all pop punk. And Americana slash Heartland Rock is a little bit different. It's one that I've really started listening to a lot more recently in the past several months over when we were growing up. But it's a genre that I really enjoy. It's Personified by, you know, in no small part, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Bob Seger, and John Cougar Mellencamp. Three classic rock artists who I have enjoyed for a very long time. And I don't I don't know if you enjoy them or not. I, I'm sure if you heard them, you might go, oh yeah, I've heard this song. And you might be able to say, oh yeah, I like this song. But they're, they're a trio of artists who I've really enjoyed for a long time. And there are even some more recent artists that I've become what, that have become some of my favorites. Uh, one of them is the Gaslight Anthem, which is probably one of my favorite bands right now. Uh, they were... Now, they've been broken up for a, for a little while now, but back in the mid mid to late 2000s and early 2010s, they were they were a pretty decent thing. Um, there are a couple songs I'm sure you've heard by them. Uh, one of them is called 45, which I definitely recommend. It's one of my favorites by them. And uh, it's what I've been... Uh, you know, we've been popping on calls sometimes, I've been and you've seen me jamming out on camera. A lot of it's been to uh, Gaslight Anthem. And they're two very different genres of music. Now, they're both under the same massive umbrella of rock, but rock is... Rock terminology itself is so varied that it's almost meaningless. Like, I can't... I'm not sure I can really define what rock and roll is or what rock music is because it's so varied and now it's it dipped its feet into a lot of like different pop group of a, a lot of different like popular music and a lot of different like even some rap and hip-hop like Linkin Park was a great example of rap metal which would fall under the massive umbrella of rock but that's not really what I want to talk about right now what I want to talk about is how uh, Heartland Rock and pop punk represent two different sides of America but kind of all in uh, kind of form themselves into one. So Heartland Americana rock is really, it's re it's almost, it's like a step above folk rock, uh, like, which is, you know, in itself, just a step above country. And it has always represented for years and years and years, decades, really like Americana Heartland rock is all about, you know, your Heartland America, your regular middle-class working class people. And it's something that I find before, you know, your Bruce Springsteen's, your Bob Seeger's, your John Mellencamp's and artists like that, a lot of rock music wasn't about the working class. It wasn't about your average everyday people. It was, you know, a lot about, you know, ancient mythology when you look at like Led Zeppelin. Uh, it was a lot about um, like a uh, black, uh, black American music. If you look at like you know bands like Cream and other other like blues rock bands from there, including Jimi Hendrix, but Heartland Rock, Heartland Rock was in itself very different, and it was groundbreaking at the time because people just didn't sing songs about your average everyday Joes, and it became a real became like a real popular music genre because because of that because it was about the working class again like. Bruce Springsteen, if you listen to especially some of his older stuff from the 80s, it's all about working class America. And I heavily recommend it. Um, Born to Run is a classic album that I think you would actually really enjoy, Tony. But it represented America at its working class core. 
And America certainly has a working class core. And pop punk is a little bit different in that regard. So pop punk, you know, is your Blink-182s, your Green Days, your Simple Plans, bands like that. And I really consider it in a way suburban rock. It's suburban teen rock because the people who loved pop punk and the people who really made pop punk what it was were, you know, suburban teens who felt left behind by the rest of the world and they really dove into their angst. If you listen to any Blink-182, you, you certainly feel that teen angst. You also certainly feel like the, confu the teen confusion. And Blink-182 is one of the most influential bands of our lifetimes because of what they what they created. Like, you wouldn't have your Fall Out Boys without Blink-182. You wouldn't have some 41 without Blink-182. And you absolutely would not have For Your Strong and um, Newfound Glory without Blink-182. And you even, in some regards, wouldn't have Modern Green Day without Blink-182, and you wouldn't have modern Blink-182 without Green Day. And it all just kind of builds in on itself, but it still feels at its very core, you're stuck in the suburbs. In fact, there's an artist named Ben Folds who, I think it was 2002, made a song that was called Stuck in the Suburbs. And if you get the chance, I definitely recommend it, because it's really funny. And it also, like, you and I will understand what it, <laughs> how it feels in part, because uh, one of the choruses... You don't realize what it's like to be male, middle class, and white. Which is, you know, your typical, like, spot of privilege. But you still, it still dives into that teen angst. Which I find it very funny because it's absolutely a tongue-in-cheek song. But it also represents pop punk as a whole. And again, like, Blink-182. Especially, like, their self-titled album and Enema of the State. And I would also say Take Off Your Pants and Jacket are really big on that teen angst feeling. As they've gotten older, their music's gotten... I'm not going to say mainstreamed because it has, but it, it's not the term. It's not the right term for it, but it's become a lot more alternative. It's a lot more about like, it's more introspective over kind of a teenage angst perspective. And both of those genres of music are ones that I listen to a lot right now because I kind of, I feel like I understand both parts of it because I am a working stiff. I, I'm not working class. I'm cer I certainly have, I'm not a blue collar worker. I'm certainly a white collar worker, but it's still like kind of the same idea of like, I'm your average everyday American who, you know, puts in his hours at work, goes home, spends time with his family and then does the same thing the next day, which really strikes a chord with a lot of heartland Americana rock. But at the same point, there's, there's that little bit of teen angst that I felt when I was a kid, how I want, you want to leave the suburbs and like, I certainly like I lived, I've lived in cities now for a very long time. Northampton is much more similar to Kent insofar as it is a college suburban town, a suburban college town, but it's kind of a interesting back and forth of, I wanted to leave the suburbs and go to the big city. I went to the big city and now I find myself back in the suburbs and, and we'll be looking to buy a house, you know, in a suburban area here in the future. And it's kind of, it's kind of a neat back and forth, and it really, it pop punk still sings to me even even to this day. Like I still feel some of those angsty feelings, some of that teenage, like not sure where you're going, some of that teenage isolation as well. Of like nobody knows what I'm like, and it's just kind of funny to look back on. And I, I sure this music is, is the music I'm sure I'm going to listen to for the rest of my life because, especially like the pop punk, I've been listening to all the time since age twelve, age thirteen maybe even younger. And Heartland Americana, I certainly, it's one of my new music obsessions, but it's one that I keep listening to as much as I can because I just, I love it. I love the way it sounds. And I think it's a really interesting look at American culture. So Tony, my question for you is, what are two, what are two music genres that you listen to a lot now? Tony, I'll see you on Monday. Later, bro.